always something. We've got the sprinklers up and running and then the head popped off of here. This one broke. You can see there's supposed to be a fitting on the bottom of this. Well, that piece that goes into the fitting right here that it connects right there, it snaps. Managed to get that broken piece out of this. I had to spare one of these laying around. The problem with this one is it's basically just one I use for parts because it doesn't extend like it's supposed to. See, it's supposed to be able to extend like that one, but it, it doesn't do that. And now I was getting ready to put this back in there and the head came off. It broke, so I think that's okay. I can just take this one off of here. That should fit. It doesn't look like it's broken. The other one had a big crack in it. Why, you know, sometimes you have some things that are broken, you hold on to them because you just never know. I know, this is hoarder talk. It's not, I don't think it's actually hoarding if you're actually using the things that, hey, what's up, Garden Friends, Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great. Muddy. I was getting ready to plant these sun impatiens, but needed to handle this first because, well, it'd be nice to be able to water them more efficiently with have the sprinkler system set up. I thought I should handle this before moving on, but I got them all laid out. Looking pretty good. Going with the, probably don't need to talk about this just yet. That's going to be the theme of the video. Lots of randomness. I just want to get a lot of things planted. Maybe get a planter done for the driveway. Pop a lot of annuals in the ground. Maybe some perennials. I don't know. It's Saturday. Last week's video just came out like 20 minutes ago. They've got a whole week to do stuff, but I would like to get the bulk of things done today because tomorrow is Mother's Day and my birthday and there's going to be people over here. I'd like to have things looking better. Doesn't need to be perfect, but it would be nice if things were more cleaned up and more tidy. Go ahead and get this down in there and then give it a try. Turn the sprinklers on, see if anything happens. All right. Spray in the wrong direction. Looks like it's probably clogged up and it's all wonky and laying down the wrong way, but it's a step in the right direction. At least there's water coming out of it. Wasn't doing that a little while ago. This has been a project. I've been working on this since last night. It's like every single time I think I have it fixed, something else is going wrong. I'm just happy that there's at least water coming out of it. I think that I can probably take that head off. There's probably a chunk of mud or something clogged up in there. I can free that clog see if that improves the flow. Nope. Nope. That's not right. That's not what that's supposed to be doing. There's got to be a clog in the line somewhere and I can't find it because normally when you take the head off of these things there's a 14, 15 foot geyser out here. That's telling me that there's something down inside that pipe. It's been an uphill battle with this thing because every time the head doesn't work the whole back fills with water and it's just, it's not going anywhere. So I can't unscrew anything until the water goes away because then the mud and the chunks go back into the line and then those end up popping back up in the head when I'm done. So I, I guess I'm just gonna have to let this finish and let it dry out and take it apart again and clean it out and hope that it works better next time. Okay, now gone from trying to fix the sprinkler head to terraforming. <laughs> can't do anything with it until I get the water out of the hole. So, trenching this out, there's a drain over here. See it? Right there? It was buried by gravel. I'm going through it. Can you see the water moving? That would be pretty self-explanatory if I could just zoom in. Yeah, you can kind of see the flow. I come through here, keep digging until it's deeper down here than it is over there. You get it, trying to get the water out of there. It, I don't really understand why it's still pulling up, but it is. I assume it's just what's flowing from the garden, but the garden's pretty dry. Do you hear that? Oh, distracted. It's okay, Turbs. That's all right. Just the ice cream, man. Yeah, so that's what's going on. This was supposed to be easy. This was supposed to be a fun-filled Saturday of throwing annuals in the ground. <laughs> Got the water line down below where the connection goes. I think I found the culprit. Don't know. See if we can get in there. You see it? You can kind of see it. That's probably too much. Yeah, there it is. It's just a pebble. I guess I can't say that that's definitely the culprit because... When I took this thing off of there, it still wasn't flowing quite right, but you got to start somewhere, and obviously that's a problem. Went inside, grabbed a wire hanger. I think that I can probably... Oh, I don't have the new tripod yet. That doesn't show up until tomorrow. I think I can probably just... I'll end up duct taping this to something when I get planting. Who knows? <laughs> well, the wire hanger did nothing. It just kept getting jammed up in there. But when I took this in, did that, all the little stones popped out. That's all I had to it really just overcomplicate something that was apparently much more simple than I thought. Yeah, that's better. It's still going the wrong direction. Watering the 
patio. That's not necessary, but the pressure. That seems about right. <sighs> okay. Give that a few turns. With these, the... Oh, 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 wrong way, wrong way. There we go. You can adjust the fan angle one direction. And you have to turn the whole head to get it to go the other way. So when you turn just this piece, you get a wider shot on it. So that's going all the way down there. All the way over there. I'm keeping it propped up with a rock right now. I'm not filling this back yet because I want to put a proper head on here. So what's the point of that? This will at least make it through. So everything's getting planted. We'll have some water without me having to go through and hand water everything. And the rest of the garden. I mean, everything's just so dry. It's been raining and raining and raining. And then it stopped for like two days and plants went bleh. They can't take it. All right. I'm just happy this is done. And now I can go ahead and pop these impatience in the ground. So as I was saying before, with the impatience, well, I lost my pattern. I had a pattern laid out here. I'm going to go pink candy, purple candy. That's not right. It was supposed to, be, it made sense, I swear. <laughs> it's been such a long time getting these laid out so that it would make sense. I'm gonna alternate the pink candies and the purple candies and the coral orange. It's just, it's gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna try and plant them a little bit further back than I usually do, which I may end up regretting. I don't know, we'll talk about it once I get them in the, ground i'm thinking no we'll talk about it later <laughs> sorry all of a sudden i have the freedom to do the projects and now my brain's just spinning okay yeah it's a mess but it's a pretty mess this is the first year that i think i've done three colors in here usually i just alternate I'm kind of pink and orange of some kind with the sun impatience went red candy purple candy red candy purple candy red candy purple candy and so forth with a hot coral which is this orange one staggered in between to help break them up. I also decided to take these up into the swoop right here because I thought it would be fun to be able to plant some more annuals in front of them. It's difficult to do that down further because there's not as much patio, right? Or not as much garden bed leading up to the patio the further down you go. But over here, I can go in further and make a bit of a swoop. I have a few more, so maybe I'll take them down and just do like one more right here and then do something completely different in this spot when I'm ready. Not right now. This is the main thing I wanted to get done, and it's done. They're in the ground. I bat filled with a combination of compost and the dirt that was already in there. No slow release because the bucket I keep my slow release in apparently has a leak in it, has a crack, so it was full of water, so that stuff's not really useful right now. Not a big deal. I can always backfill with that later. My main thing was that I wanted to pull them up instead of just having a single row across so that they would have this more of a checkered woven pattern. The only issue with planting them further back, I started to talk about this earlier and then I <laughs> abandoned it. It's like, no, just get to work. You need to get planting. The bananas and the bikini teeny colocasia elephant ears that are in here. In years past, those have come up and really ended up shading these. But if y'all been watching the videos, I have been digging up the bananas that have been emerging more towards the front and scooting them to the back as they pop up. So I think that that will maybe make a difference. I don't know. Main thing is we just have to keep the foliage trimmed out that's shading them right here and stay on top of pulling the bikini teeny colocasias. I want them to be growing in the back of the bed, not right in the front. And uh, oh, and I also popped a tight giant right there in the corner. I don't know how it'll do. We'll see. Time will tell. Okay, that's good. Now I have to do some other things that will be in a video uh, that I think will come out before this one, planting up some estate planters for someone. And uh, handle all that and then we'll probably pick up on Monday I'm guessing you to get through Mother's Day and all those festivities and I'm just I'm so glad to have this done it looks <laughs> messy but you know these things take time it'll fill in it'll look great and I'm not going to bother cleaning up this trench just yet because like I said I want to get to the hardware store sometime this week or next week today's Saturday and get a more appropriate sprinkler head to put in here that I don't have to constantly repair so there's no reason to start filling that back in when I'm probably going to have to keep digging on it and trying to fix it. Wait, no, forgot. I still have to do this spot right here. I know I sound winded. It's because I am. It's been a busy morning. I don't really know how to handle this spot because the big palm tree that goes over here isn't here yet. I'm going to have to move all this stuff out with this new step right here. I'd have to... I'm not going to be able to lift that palm tree over whatever I plant there. I could just go from like here and stop right there and hold on to a couple to fill that spot back in. Uh, maybe? Uh, we'll see what I come up with. Okay, that is done. I have to make this very fast. It's the next day. People are here. The doggy cousins are here. As soon as I finished up all that, I planted these up, which this video should have been out Wednesday. 
So there should be no surprise there, right? Everybody seen these? Aren't they beautiful? What do you think? Comment down below. Do you love them? Got 14 of the Sun and Patience put in right here. I left room to keep them going down this way so that when the big head of Nydia palm gets delivered, I can pull this stuff out and swap the plants around. And I just figured I have to make it work somehow. I brought the tie out, which you can barely see because it's down there in the shade, the shadiest spot in the yard. That's where it's going to have to stay for now. And I have just now brought out the Eureka palm. Looks pretty good, right? I mean, considering, not even considering, just in general. This thing really got through the winter almost flawlessly. Didn't have many mealybugs this year, which is rare. Spider mites, not too bad. I can see, okay, there's one mealybug right there. There's one up there. It's still gonna need some more spring, but once they're outside, I think that nature pretty much takes care of the mealybugs just fine. I was concerned that when I pulled this away from the ceiling, there were gonna be nests of spider mites up inside the crown from all the stuff that was pressed up against the ceiling, but looks good, looks totally fine. Don't see anything up there, just needs a little bit of cleanup. Not even that much, just a few dead fronds. That's not bad at all, considering it's been in the garage since October. I think it looks pretty dang good. Okay, and now, yeah, family's here to do birthday and Mother's Day things, so I'm going to get that cleaned up, set up, and I'll probably pick up tomorrow, because I think it's time to stop filming today. It's, you know, got family here, so it's time to put down the camera, relax, enjoy, do the whole family hangout thing. Look at the dent. Big dent. So many plants are gone. Big open gap. I got more annuals moved up top. Is good. Things are rolling. Starting to cruise along here. Too much? What do we think? I love it. It's perfect. This little one in here is only four feet across to try and keep the ducks and the grackles away from the pool. It wasn't doing the trick. This one right here, haven't seen a duck or a grackle since it's, well, it's only been like 17 hours, but still, <laughs> I think it's gonna work. I don't know, oh, sorry. That's probably making everybody dizzy. Go ahead and slow it down, slow it down. Go ahead and stop. Um, you can hear, you hear what's, you hear what's going on up there? It's really loud. It's right behind everything so i don't know i'm gonna try and get some stuff done need to i guess move these i think they're fine right here for now and then i would like to put together a planter for the driveway now that i have a hose that can reach around to the driveway i need to, i should put a planter in there i had an urn that used to sit in between the garage doors that i used to plant up with just extras, things that I hadn't gotten around to planting, and I called it like a garbage planter. I would put it together like every July or August. I'd like to go ahead and plant it up before plants are at the garbage level and just have it look nice. It's a really good full sun spot and there's some plants that I could put in there that I just don't think I could keep over here. It makes so loud. This one, that's the urn. Just a big kind of bronzy, some lighter, br I don't know what color is that. I have no idea. You get it. It's a big pot. I have more than enough to work with over here to get that planted up. And I think that's the perfect plant to put in the middle of this thing. Let's go ahead and just make myself a path so I can get through here. Would be the lantana tree. I got this at a greenhouse. It was in a video. And I mentioned in that video that I maybe shouldn't get it because every year they struggle. I mean, lantana's not that hard to grow, right? They just need a lot of sun. That's the main thing. Don't let them sit in a really soggy location. They'll be good. The problem is the sun shifts out here, you know, just like it does everywhere, unless you live like down by the equator. But for everybody else, it angle changes, and then the trees block it, and then the lantanas go downhill. But in the driveway, very, very, very sunny and scorching sun. And the lantana, should do well there. I've grown them over in that area before and they seem to like the spots. I think that this is the perfect plant for that area. Won't be seen all that often, but that's okay. Still be something to appreciate. Now, I'm definitely not going to underplant it with more lantana. That wouldn't really make any sense. I'm not going to do that. But there are a lot of other things over here that I picked up that I'm kind of on the fence with how they'll do out here later in the year when the sun starts to move. The gomfrinas actually surprisingly have done really well out here despite the sun shifting later in the summer they get kind of leggy i think that this would look really pretty under there though the salvia for sure i think some salvia would be great in there this is the unplugged pink is the name on that one 14 to 30 inches it's a big one this annual except in zones 9 to 11 but for some reason i thought the unplugged were 
or perennial. I guess I got that wrong. That's okay. It doesn't need to be a perennial. Annual will be just fine there. Isn't that a lovely tone? One of the big things I like to do whenever I'm planting around a lantana, and it just I like to make sure that there are plenty of other things for the pot. I just want this to be like a pollinator bomb. Bomb's probably not the right word. You know, a, like a like a what, what is it? What is, how would I say this? <laughs> it just happened. Everything in my brain just stopped working while I was talking. That's not great for making YouTube videos. You know, the light that attracts the insects and then it shocks them like that, but not gruesome, and with the intention of giving them something to eat and enjoy. Verbena over the front. I like that purple, especially with the yellows and everything up top. When they're that far apart, it's not like they're going to do that much for each other. But Verbena will also do well in the driveway where things are pretty hot. So Verbena Violet Ice. This is a very prolific Verbena. I have two. I really don't think that this needs two. But I don't know. I'm kinda, I think I'd like to see what it looks like with two in there. I would appreciate the instant gratification of it. And I have two. So maybe I'll do that. We've got a lot of purples and pinks going on down low and a lot of yellows and oranges going on up top. Mm, that's you know, that's fine, who cares, it doesn't matter. Go ahead and try and restack things as I'm going. That's too close together. May as well space them out since I have some more space here. There goes the cement drill again. Or cement saw, apparently. Here's the T, you want the T? So the pool is basically done up there and then they get the pumps up and running and there's low pressure and it turns out one of the pipes cracked underneath one of the concrete pads that they poured up there. This pool company, man, they don't know what they're doing. And now there's a construction crew up there that I think is separate from the pool company trying to remedy the issue. I don't, it's just, it's such a mess. Gumfrina, I have to have a Gumfrina in here. I just love them so much. It's going to be maybe something that's going to contrast with the salvia but i don't care i just want a lot of flowers in here for the pollinators let's do another one back here this is going to be full this is going to be overflowing with flowers oh it's going to look so good this is tempting too this is very tempting i think the cosmos would do well over there and i like that it's a lighter color this particular one it's going to lighten things up a lot mm -hmm. it's something it's just a totally different flower shape from everything else that's in there so it's going to start to get like a wildflower vibe going on in here. If I were to put maybe just like one or two in the back. Yeah, it's just a lot of flowers. That's perfect. Problem though, is that the other one that I have is a different color completely. So there'd be a white one on one side and then this more of a pinkish burgundy doesn't want to focus color on the other side. Now, I don't know about that since I have some symmetry going on with the Gumfrinas and the Salvias and everything else that's in there. So maybe I should pull from the six pack and just let those fill in randomly. If it's more random, then it makes more sense. But if it's two different colors entirely on each side, then that's gonna bug me. That's not right. I just don't think that'll look right. Okay, so I'll hold on to this one, which is fine, because I really like this one. I don't know if I want it in the backyard. I want the backyard. I don't know if I want it in the garage. I want to be able to see it out here more. And with these, I can just mix them in. The only thing that you need to keep in mind here is the choke effect. All these are plants that get very big. The verbena will mostly come over the front, but these salvia, they get big and bushy. These gumfrina, they get big, not so bushy, but they get very airy. So it won't be long to the gumfrinas up here and the salvias all over the place. This is going to be a very full planter. You think the cosmos might end up just getting choked out? Potentially, I don't know, it's a six pack. I'll just throw a few of them in there. We'll see what happens. I'll be doing that later because it is raining. Not really hard, but hard enough that Probably shouldn't be out here with the camera, so we'll cut back later and hopefully have this planted up or get it planted up. Because I'll probably tinker around with it and make some changes. Okay, how's that? Audio good? Everything's hooked up? If y'all can see, it's what I just did with this camera to make it so that I can get this all in shot. It's ridiculous. I've got you strapped up to the dolly right now. Seems to be working okay. I don't have an adapter. It's a whole, it's a whole thing with a tripod. Don't need to go into all of that. I was trying to get this centered and just never really found an angle where I could settle on it being the center or like what would the front be? I think this would be the front like this, probably. It's a lantana, it's kind of wonky. Also rained off and on for hours and look at this thing. But what, why, why, why is this so dry? And normally I wouldn't, okay, all right. Tripod's failing and the zoom is a dramatic. You can see I've already added a bunch of soil and here I'm gonna work my way from the back to the front. I'm still on the fence about the Cosmos, but 
it's just, it's a cheap little six pack. So I think, I don't know what that was. I just dropped, I'll find it later. I'm just gonna pop a few of them in here. It's gonna be one of those things where we just sit back and wait and we'll get to see what they do together. So white one in the middle and a couple of these pink. Is it pink or purple? Well, you can tell me, is that pink or purple? Looks pink on camera, kind of purple in person. <laughs> Never mind. couldn't even see what I was doing. White in the middle, and then these pinkish purple ones on the side. Is the camera, I think the, the tripod's failing. I think you were about to fall. Fine, you get the picture. There's not much to see with those just yet anyways. And then I have to decide, do I want the Salvia in front of the Gomfrina or the other way around? And does it really even matter because the Gomfrina is going to grow up and be all over the place up here? I guess the Salvia probably will be too. They have about an equal height to them. I think that since the Verbena is going to be in the front, I want the Salvia closer to the front just because there's more of that green foliage that's going to be down low. Why did I say that so weird? Foliage? Those pronunciation critics out there. The leaves of the plant will be closer down to the verbena, so they'll have that nice green down there by the purple. I think that'll be nice. Whereas the gumfrina is going to be more up and wispy and above everything, which I think would be fitting to have that back there with the cosmos. Listen, we all know I'm putting too much in here. That's no secret. I don't care. It's going to be fine. These are all plants that will, I think, do just fine. Smothered. <laughs> Smothered. That's how you know you're leading a good example. I think they'll play well together. Even though it's going to be a tight fit, it should be totally fine. I know earlier I said that it would be weird to put lantana in the bottom of the lantana container, but thinking back on that, it actually would make perfect sense. Like, oh look, there's lantana up top and down below but the thing is i really i just want the verbena in here it's one of my favorites it's going to drape very nicely over the front of the container i'll try and get another shot of this in the morning by the way the lighting's not great right now it's like seven something the sun's going down but the rain and the noise just came to a halt so i figured she got here and get this done since the plants were looking thirsty and i already had them set up and i didn't want to take them apart and water them individually it just made more sense to just go ahead and get it done something i'm not doing with this container that i really should be, and which I was doing, is adding slow release. I always like to make sure that I'm putting continuous release in containers that have a lot of annuals in them. But I had a bit of an oopsie with my storage bucket. I have a bucket that has an airtight lid on it. You know, use it for like feed for animals or in my case, fertilizer. Sitting in the gorilla cart and I thought everything was fine. I took the lid off a few days ago so I could do a planter and it was like halfway full of water, which doesn't mean that the continuous release that was in there is now useless, but it means that it would be iffy as to what, if anything, it's even going to do after having soaked in water for like a week, right? If I'm gonna bother putting the stuff in there, I'd rather it be fresh. I've been kicking myself for that because it's the, the Jack's Classic Coat which isn't very cheap. I order it in a bulk bag. I get it in a 25 pound bag and it's like 70 to hundred dollars, depending on where you're getting it from. And you know, prices on those things just fluctuate like crazy, but there was only like maybe this much of it left in the bottom of the bucket. So I was going to be ordering a new bag this month. Anyways, I was actually going to be ordering it at the same time. Cause I knew I was going to run out, but this feels like it was such a waste. Okay. And that, yeah, see, that was the problem right there. Not very professional, but it's what I had to work with. This is done. It doesn't look fantastic, but it's going to take it some time. It needs to be watered in clearly, right? I'm going to do that as soon as I shut the camera off here and probably let it sit here overnight and then get it moved to the driveway. I don't want to move it to the driveway. It's full of water. And I may have to add some more soil. You know, you water it in and kind of burp things up and see where some gaps are. Overall, I think this is going to look very nice. I think that the color combo down low does not match the top, but that's okay. I don't care. I just wanted these plants together in one spot where the pollinators will be flowing all over it. And like I said, this is one that goes in between my garage doors. <laughs> it's not something we can be seeing all that often, but it's something where when I want to go out and I want to see the pretty salvias and the verbenas and the truffle pink gumfrinas and some cosmos and the light, like I just, everything is concentrated into one container. Maybe they don't flow together, but that's okay. I do think the cosmos is probably the biggest stretch for this pot just because everything in here are annuals that have been bred to just grow and grow and grow like maniacs. And the cosmos in the back is not, right? Like the salvia, they'll come up really big. The gumfrina, gonna get big, but it's big wispy stuff that's just gonna kind of poke out from inside the salvia because the salvia is gonna fill that area in. Verbena is gonna mostly go over the front. The cosmos, 
I don't know, I figure it would stand its best chance with the Gomfrina in front of it because at least the Gomfrina is also more of an open and wispy, airy plant as opposed to the Salvia, which if that were to fall right in front of the Cosmos, it's just going to eat it alive. So it's quite possible the Salvia is gonna eat everything in this container. I like it, looking forward to watching it grow and happy to have it done. Now I just need to water it in and we'll pick back up in the morning. Don't think it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Probably still gonna be lots of noise in the cicadas. It's like raining cicadas at this point, but that's okay. That To me, that's just the sounds of summer. I don't mind the cicadas. Oh, good morning, buggy kitten. Is it bath time? Oh, yep, time for a bath. Look, can you go roll over? Can you roll over? Probably not. The dog was just barking. Threw you off your game. You can do it. Roll over, bite. No, nope. you still got to figure out what the dog's been barking at, huh? He's throwing a fit because got the gate shut. Sorry, Turbo. Just a few more minutes, baby. She was being so cute. She was rolling all over the place, back and forth on the carpet, and just being, you know, a cute floof. Then I turned the camera on, and she, well, she didn't stop, but she turned her back and decided that it was time to take a bath instead of entertain me. That's okay. That's not what she's here for. You roll over? You can do it, but, okay, well, she started to. She at least laid down. And now she's back up. The littlest sound. That's all it takes to throw her off. What are you doing? Roll over, Pumpkin. Come on, Pumpkin, roll over. There we go. Oh, Pumpkin, you're so cute. That was a good rollover, Pumpkin. <laughs> All the way over. That was so good. And back to the other side. Can you do it again? Is that asking too much? You want to roll over one more time? No, oh, back to watching the dog. Oh, I think she's going to do it. You going to do it, Pumpkin? There we go. Big rollover. You're so stinking cute, bud. And back over. You're just having a great morning. She's in such a good mood. Just rolling on the carpet. Does it smell kind of like catnip, Pumpkin? It should, because there's catnip all over the freaking thing. And back to the other side. It's so cute. It is a beautiful morning. I was looking out the window and I noticed, that, look at how the, that Eureka palm just looking great, isn't it? The view from up here is totally different. You can actually see the top of the palm tree. Did great this winter. Apparently, the trick is to just water it less and fertilize it less. That's all I did. I didn't do anything special other than do less. Sometimes less is more. No, actually, I think the main reason that it did swell this winter is because it wasn't being bombarded by mealybugs all winter long. There were some on there, but not that many. Doing the neem thing every... Well, it was supposed to be every two weeks, which I kept up for a couple of months, and then it slipped to being, like, every three weeks. And then I stopped for about a month and a half, and then things got bad again, and I went back to every two weeks. And now here we are. Looking pretty good. It's very loud. I'm not even out there yet. I've been hearing the saws and things going all morning, so we're going to try and get stuff done out there. But I just, I don't know. The cement saw or whatever they're using to cut up the patio, it's very loud. Snails are looking good. Have some shrimp coming in the mail today. Fifty-two degrees, and still loving the pool. The lantana planter, I guess that's what we'll call it, it's not a garbage planter like it has been in years past, it's kind of a catch-all. Maybe you could go with that. It's flushing out, that's not the right word, plumped back up. Yeah, there we go, it's hydrated. Looking a lot better, looks like we got some more rain last night. Everything out here is just completely and totally sopping wet which does interfere with some of what I was hoping to do, but it's still early, so maybe things will dry off later in the day. I have this Lismachia here. It's called Waikiki Sunset. Right there. There's a, That's the name right there. has a really pretty yellowy foliage with some green variegation in the middle. The stems are reddish colored and hairy. Also, just the $3.98, that's a pretty good price for a proven winner's annual. Where did I get this from? I need to go back to that store. I only say that because just a minute ago I was out here looking at all the wave petunias and realized that I don't have a single Vista or Super Petunia out here. I didn't buy any proven winner petunias this year because they're just so freaking expensive. But $3.98, that's the same price as the wave petunias. Where was that? This is probably, I'm guessing Home Depot. That would be my guess. Anyways, whole point there was that I was thinking I could... <laughs> Why not throw some more plants in this, right? If I were to get these down here, right in between that salvia and that gomfrina, one, I think that contrast would be welcome with the similar shades that are in here, the fuchsias and those pinks. I think that that would look good, and it may help brighten up the bottom of the container since they have all these bright, 
you know, tropical colors up top and then the more pink mauve tones down below, this might be a good addition. What do you think? It doesn't matter. Nobody cares, right? These are like wet sponges right now, so I don't know if I want to do that at this exact moment or if I should just leave things be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, See, I think that was the right move. That goes well with those colors, and it does help brighten things up and bring the top and the bottom together. Just a couple little yellow plants down there, and this is already making more sense to me. It was okay with me that it didn't match perfectly last night when I finished with it. When I came out this morning, I was looking at it, and I was like, well, you got the plants right there. Those might look good in that container, so may as well toss them in there, right? I'd say that's a welcome improvement, because you just have to remember, everything's got to grow, right? So this Lismachia, that beautiful yellow color with those green. I love the green. I love the variegation on this one. That's going to be coming out. There will be lots more of it from the sides down low. I think that's just, that'll make, it'll all make more sense that way, right? Because as it is, it just looked like there were two completely different things going on there, which I was okay with because I ultimately just wanted a lot of plants in here for the pollinators and plants that I can't really grow that well on the patio or I can, but only for a few months, whereas this is something that'll go all the way until fall. Get a lot of sun a lot of heat on the driveway, in the driveway. Like I said, the cosmos, I don't know. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll just see how that does. You ready, you ready for more toy? Okay, all right, you're gonna give me, okay, I got it, I get it, Turbo. Ready, here you go, boom. <laughs> i try again, here we go, boom. What's he gonna do, is he gonna wait for it? Is he gonna jump in? You're free, you can get in if you want. Now he's gonna wait for it. It's fine, you're being a good boy, you better watch out. Oh, you better watch out. Turbo, it's gonna get you. Oh. Yep, not bothered. He was kind of afraid of that ball the first day it was in there. You gotta give it here, you know the rules. All right, ready? This is it, last time. I'll get it in the water, there you go. Go in, you can get in, go swim, you're free. Get your toy. Did you get in? There you go, good boy. All right, he's living his best life. I just went ahead and gave this a scoot down this direction because I need to get the <laughs> planters out of here that are supposed to be on each side of the steps here. I moved them when the patio was repaved and never put them back in place. So that's, that's the end of that story. The planters over here, they have the spring grove arbs in them. I plant those up with various palm trees. It depends on what the greenhouse gives me. If they can, it's, it's a whole thing. We'll talk about when the palm trees get delivered. They will be replanted with tropical plants in a couple of weeks. I talked to the people at the greenhouse yesterday afternoon and they said they're really behind on deliveries because of all the rain. And yeah, I guess, I don't know, it's spring. It rains every year, but whatever. I don't really care. They're not gonna be here until possibly the first week of June, which is incredibly late. I usually prefer for them to be here within the first two weeks of May, but it really worked out for the best, I think, because I still have a lot of other things I would like to get done out here before the palm trees even get here. It's also a double-edged sword because there are a lot of things over here that need to get planted and they can't get planted until the palm trees are here because they're under plantings for the palm trees. Regardless, they're behind and that's fine. It'll either be the last week of May, first week of June. Okay, I'm just, I'm only moving the one. I do like how it looks. It looks kind of nice, right? It doesn't fit the vibe out here at all. But temporarily, just for a week or two, I really like it. These two, by the way, in the video where I planted these up, I uh, mentioned that these were for someone else, but I like them so much I doubled up on everything. So these two are for me. Pretty sure these are the ones that I'm keeping. And the person who uh, these are for has seen them, and they're going to do things just a little bit differently. Just one hydrangea in the front and some begonias or something in the back. Because of the uncertainty as to whether or not it's a reblooming hydrangea, it just seemed like the smartest way to do things for them. So these are staying. They'll be elsewhere. They can't stay right here. They would fry. Those could never sit there all summer long. But just for a couple weeks, they should be fine. And then I'll get them moved to the backyard. I think that it pairs well with the spring grove are behind it. Does kind of make it disappear some, but I don't mind it. The reason I'm only moving the one is because I realize that this other one is providing a lot of privacy right now between uh, out here, the side of the patio, and the like 12 feet away where all the construction workers are working directly behind it. The underside of the spruce has started to open up 
and thin out. Yeah, I'm not going to move that. I want it there. It just adds a hint of privacy and some sound barrier. I can't imagine that this project will take more than another week, two weeks maximum, I would hope. This is the pool construction that just will never end, but it's got to be, <laughs> has to be near the end at this point, I would hope. So yeah, that's why just the one for now. I've been looking over here at the garden bed thinking about what I want to do in front of all of these sun and patients. And traditionally, I have just stuck Tredescantia in front of them. Typically in front of these, I usually do the Pelida, or which is just the purple, you know, the regular purple heart one, or the Nanooks. The Nanooks or the Pelida, both of them usually come back for me every year, but this year I trenched up. I, I don't know if trenched up is what I would describe, but I had to regrade the front of this bed because it was all over the patio and I think that I probably buried that Tredescantia under there, the Nanooks, so I doubt they're going to return. They would usually be popping up by now. So the options are some Nanook variants that I have in the grow space right now that have a smaller leaf. I think that might be fun for this area over here. I only have to, okay, I'm going to go ahead and throw this because that's never going to stop. Never going to stop if I don't. There you go. Go get it. Why do I have to convince you to go get the toy when you beg me to throw it? It doesn't make sense. You're such a weird retriever. Go get your toy. Yeah, go get it. Get your toy. I don't, why do I have to convince you? I don't understand. I do understand. He's just being very, very polite. Sometimes he thinks that he needs to wait for permission to get in the pool, and sometimes he's just in go mode. I don't... He's in between on that. The... <laughs> back on point here. I only have two of those, so... it won't really fill out that whole area. I should have taken cuttings and rooted some more. So I could put one like right here, then another one right there, and then maybe do something else on each side of those so it would alternate them, like sweet potato vines. That would be nice. And I was thinking along the lines of sweet potato vines of possibly planting some in front of all the sun impatience that are down here. Maybe. The thing is, I only have six, which I think should be enough. There would be one, two, three, one, two, three. I could make that work. I feel like I really need more like four down here, but they get huge. The, what is it, the Sweetheart Lime is my preferred sweet potato vine because it's, for sweet potato vine, more tidy. But uh, I couldn't find those at the nurseries, so I just have some regular green marguerites which can get pretty big and out of control. I think that that would work, having that cascade of green with the nanooks in there might look nice. And uh, alternating between the ones that I put down here, what about those wave petunias? All those baskets that I have, just the pink in there, I think that might look pretty good with that really pretty chartreuse green of the sweet potato vines in front of them. I don't know, that's something I'm thinking about it and I'm gonna give it a minute and we're gonna see what happens. Oh, bumblebee. No, carpenter bee. That's okay. Still cute. So, what I was getting ready to say, noise started up, you know, and had a box of fish come in the mail, so some time has passed, had to handle all of that. I mentioned earlier that I had accidentally destroyed what little supply I had left of the slow-release fertilizer, and the shipping on that said it wasn't going to get here till like, May 27th, something like that. It was the end of the month. So there are some things I'd wanted to do, like pull up all these butterbirds and get the impatience planted down there. And then all the stuff that I just talked about with the way petunias, those are things I want to do, but I don't want to plant them up without the continuous release, especially down there, right? Cause I'm gonna be planting hundreds of impatience. I do not want to go back in and work that slow release by hand into the soil. It's much easier to do it right after the holes have been dug with the auger to sprinkle it in so it's already in there. Doing it by hand would take a very long time. What if the wave petunias wouldn't be that big of a deal? I don't think, but anyways, none of that matters. But I just got an Amazon notification saying it's going to be delivered today. So we will see. That probably means not until like later tonight. So I don't know. For now, maybe just go ahead and pick them up and set them down, right? And see how they look. They have handles on them. It's pretty easy. Just grab a few of these and see what they look like. <laughs> Is that fun? Nice little pocket recording. You hear that? Sounds like summer. Cicadas are going. I don't think I'm really going to be able to space these all that evenly when I'm just mocking it up because there's a slope right here. You can see the four of those fit in there with a sweet potato vine. One, two, three, four. Four sweet potato vines. These will be planted further back. 
I have add some nice color and the contrast of sweep shed vines. I think that'll look really nice. I could probably pop one right here too. I've been thinking about putting some kind of low growing ground cover perennial in that spot. But this is fine for now. That'll work. One, two, three, four, five. I like that better. I think that looks better. It completes the swirl or the curve. And, uh, nah, I don't want these over here. Hula begonias. I've been thinking, despite saying that I don't think they'll divide very well, I think that was in a different video. I can't remember. Maybe popping these in the pots with those hydrangeas down there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that looks good. I like those down there. <laughs> Trish is going to be to see. The, Trish is just good. the trick is going to be to see if I can divide them up without destroying them to make them work in those containers. I think that that's a good spot for them underneath the hydrangeas just because I noticed with the hula pinks, even though they say sun to shade or part shade to full sun, they really do cup up and get crispy. The foliage starts to pull up and get that bronzish hue to it when they do get full sun. And these containers do get a lot of sun, but come midsummer, they are fairly well shaded because the tops of those hydrangeas get absolutely massive and they shade everything down below. So that might be a good fit. Might be a harsh few weeks for them until those flush out some more, but I think it'll be okay in the long run. Down here, I'm having second thoughts. Welcome to my creative process here. So to me, these pinks really blend together and I'm losing the effect of how pretty those impatience are behind everything. The pro to going with this is instant gratification. Those wave petunias are already so big that that's going to flush out and just be full and overflowing with flowers in no time. But uh, I think it takes away from the sun impatience. And I have an alternative over here, and that's uh, the crazy tunias, Mayan Sunset. They are one of my favorites. Color-wise, haven't grown them. This is my first year growing them. I'm wondering how they would do over there. These are Calibrac DNA, right? And sometimes the wetness in the ground doesn't always do great. Although with Calibrac, sometimes I put them in a container and they do great and the ones in the ground die. And then sometimes the ones in the ground do great and the ones in the containers die. So uh, maybe it's not something I really need to worry about with these. I should just perhaps go for it. I have plenty of them. There are 14 right here. I have, I think, four more over here, and I have a few more in the house, too. Oh, hey, kitten. How you doing? What's up, stalker? Oh, so, not going to have the instant gratification if I do this, because it's going to take them some time to fill out. But color-wise, I think that it would look pretty freaking awesome, because the colors on these... It's more saturated. You have that orange on the inside. I have to think about this, and that's okay, because I have a few hours until the slow release gets here, and then I can make up my mind then. The other thing with the wave petunias is that I have them. Like, I have so many of them. There are so many wave petunias over here. Like, I'm not keeping all of these, but this does work out perfect, so I was going to be using four for someone else. So that would still leave me with one more to work with if I had all those in the ground. Alternatively, actually, I don't know, <laughs> I'm thinking, something I've wanted to do for a long time, I don't know if I have the sun for it though, would be to fill up the top of this wall that's behind the beach ball with wave petunias from like right here and down. But I just, I don't know, I don't think there's enough sun, not underneath the bayberry anyways, but I could do a whole bunch of them up on the hill around the alocasias. Not right now, because there's just like dunes everywhere, right on the other side of the fence, that'd be really awkward. But that would be an option. Might be a fun one too, because I have a few extra sun impatience, the vigorous orange, the variegated ones. I have some extras of those. And I was thinking about putting those up on that hill around the alocasias, and then in front of those I could put the, okay, all right. Hey, sorry that this went on so long, but I think I'm onto something here. It looks okay. I don't mind that so much. I also remembered that I needed four of these wave petunias to go underneath the Alexander palm, which isn't here, won't be for a couple of weeks. So if I were to plant out all of these, that's not gonna leave me with enough of what I want to do under the edge. I think I like the persimmon, not persimmon. Mayan sunset, I think I like that better, but I really gotta think this through because this spot, there's a lot of moisture over here and that's got Calibrac DNA in it and it might just end up rotting out. The Calibrac's, you know, wet feet, that's not their thing. But you know what, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna just go with my gut here and it's telling me to go with the crazy tunias. I love the wave petunias. I think that they're beautiful, but y'all saw in the other shots prior to this one, 
I felt like they took away from the drift that I had back here of sun impatience, and these things should go together and complement each other instead of distract from it. And like I said, I need some to put underneath the Alexander palm, and this will kind of throw off my numbers. So this is good, and I have more than enough of these crazy tunias, and if they don't do well here, that's okay. Y'all know the sweet potato vines are going to fill this spot in on their own, and I'm going to be fighting them <laughs> all summer long to make sure that they don't eat those crazy tunias alive. The thing that might be the saver here, if the ground were to be too wet for a calabrac, is that this is a slope, so this will be on the drier part of this soil? No, no, not really, actually, because moisture is going to move downward, so... I don't know, I think it's fine. We're just gonna give it a try and see what happens. Oh, and it's the next day. The Amazon, it was a lie. The stuff didn't come. And it's raining, so don't even know how much of this I'm gonna be able to get on camera. But I'm gonna go ahead and get those popped into the ground at the very least, and try and get a few more things planted. I would like for the dent, they've made a huge dent over here. I would like for it to be bigger. Uh, it'd be great to get the Colocasias planted. I think it would be nice to get those in the ground as soon as possible. Okay, there it is. I like it. Yeah, it's not as vibrant and as huge of a pop as you have the wave petunia, but I think that that huge vibrant pop from the wave petunia really would have taken away from all these beautiful sun and patience back here. And I also really want to see how these crazy tunias do in the ground. I've tried crazy tunia before, not the Mayan sunset, but the crazy tunias from the flower shower series, I think is what it's called. They're generally pretty good petunias, so I just, I don't know, I wanted to see how they would do. I have enough of them, this made sense. Give it a shot. I dug a hole right there. I don't remember why, but I put some pots there, so I'll stick something in there later. I was thinking over here, right there, I already dug a hole for it, that that might be a good spot for one of these Pharaoh's Dream Colocasias. And then I noticed that there's a surprise coming up here in the garden, and that would be a Pharaoh's Mask which I don't remember plant. I did plant one there in 2022. I don't remember it coming back in 2023. Oh, you know what? It did come back in 2023, but it was very small and didn't do much. So, okay, well, so now there's a redemption and a uh, Pharaoh's mask and there are bikini teenies all over the place. There's one right there. And now I'm going to put a Pharaoh's dream right over. We'll just call this Colocasia Cove. Fine with that. And yeah, it all still needs to be manicured and landscaped. You see, I've been working over here. We'll get to this eventually. I think that this would be a good spot for it. Also, I kind of like the idea of that leaf being in front of all this darker foliage here. I specifically told him not to get in the pool. Is he hiding behind the ball? Really, Turbo? It's raining. Now I gotta dry you off. It's a warm pocket over here. Everything does pretty well, so I think this would be a good spot for it, because I am planning and hoping on this being a perennial. I think that that would be a good spot for it. Only hesitations that it might be too close to the Sable Miner, but also I kind of wanted it close to the Sable Miner. It's a palm. That's what this is right here. It's a palm tree. Because when we have those really cold dips, we drop below zero degrees Fahrenheit. It happens every single year. These have mulch on them, they have lights on them, they have a bag on them. That means that if this is within radius of that, it's going to help keep it warm. So that's not going to give a good guide either. People want to know how hardy they are next year and be like, yeah, it survived, but also like, if it dropped below zero, it was next to a warm source. But I have two, so I plan on putting the other one someplace. Well, I don't know. Pretty much every spot in my garden has something nearby that gets a big pile of mulch on it. But I'm going to do my best to put it someplace that's going to give a better idea of how hardy it is. That was too much talking. You get it. Here's the roots. Looks pretty good. They sent me two of these because they were very small, and you can see it hasn't rooted out all that much into its container, but I'd say it's probably just fine. I'm going to do my best, though, to get this in here without disturbing that root mess very much. Because, yeah, no, Colocasias, right? They don't really like their roots messed with very much. I'm gonna keep the hang tag right there. Gently fill that back in. Accidentally got a bunch of mulch mixed in with the augers. I'm trying to get more of the soil in there, not so much the mulch. I think that should be good. Yeah, I think that's a good spot for it. It should grow up and over and ideally be above, have a nice cup-shaped leaf just above these sables, at least for this year. Eventually the sables are going to keep getting larger. And, you know, you can see sometimes they throw up leaves that are really tall. I don't anticipate them doing that this year, other than that one right there that already did it. Once it's established itself, if that spot seems like it's not great, then I'll move it. That's easy enough to do. Yeah, I, I like how that looks. You can't even really see it from over here. Let's come over here across the willow and the arb. 
Yeah, I think it's good. The crazy tunias, they have the colors from all the various sun impatience in the front. I will be fighting <laughs> with the sweet potato vines, but that's just part of it. I couldn't find the ones that stay smaller, and the ones that stay smaller don't even stay that small. I like that chartreuse green in front of everything, though. And I really wanted to try having something in the front of the garden this year because, well, it helps cut back on weeds. Fill the space in. Have some heavy ground cover in there and don't have to worry about mulching the area or weeding it as much. And it's just extra color. What's not to love? Gotta love some extra color, right? Okay, I have two more Leucocasia Gigantia, Leucocasia. You can see I put one over here. I have one of the Gigantia Thai Giants. That's what those are. Thai Giant Colocasia. It's not a Colocasia. We'll call it that right there at the very end. And I have two more. And I was thinking about popping them on each top of the step over here. I already have the Borneo Giants planted up here. You can see them right there. See it? There's one right there. This is a red bud. I need to cut this out of here. It's not supposed to be here. What well, it is, it's a native. It is supposed to be here, but I'm saying I didn't plant it right here. And it just like magically seems to have appeared out of nowhere. So that's going to be going. But in front of both the Borneo Giants having the Leucocasia, I know that that seems like a weird combination to have those right next to each other, but it'll add a lot of privacy because the Borneo Giants go up and they get tall and the Leucocasia gets really wide. So it'll really fill in the spot. And it'll add a lot of privacy. I think that that would look good. Right, you think? Oh, I'm gonna do it anyways. Ah, yeah, see? Good. One on each side, fairly evenly spaced. They're gonna fill in and they'll cover the steps, but who cares? Nobody uses the steps, it's fine. And I also popped a Colocasia Polar Green right here in front of the little gem magnolia, and I put another one back over here in the corner. Curious to see how those do. Largely just really more so, how are they going to compete with the Bikini Teenies? The Bikini Teenies, yeah, I have to pull on them a lot. They're coming up everywhere. I would prefer to keep them in the underbrush of the banana trees and start pulling the ones that are coming up all over the place, but I never do. And I always am going, oh, but they look so good. And then I don't pull them up. I, I start to just keep them out of the impatience. We'll see what happens this year. On a separate note, the little gem, I mentioned the garden tour about how I was gonna move it because it just isn't doing well here. Two days after I said that, I think it must've heard me and it has flushed back out. And I think it's going to end up looking really beautiful. So I, get, I guess it can stay. Maybe we'll have a normal winter this year and it won't have any dieback. Just have to wait and see what happens there. There are only a few things left that I want to get done right now because it's, well, it's just, it's gonna bug me if I don't get it done. I would like to get the diamond head colocasia planted up just because I don't, I don't really like it over here. I mean, I kind of do. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because None of this is going to be here in a couple of weeks, right? There's going to be a Robolini palm here and a couple of queen palms here and annuals will be planted out underneath those plants that are coming so that it's, you get it. I also want it out in the open because it's, it's just smothered in there and these things, they're spider mite mags. It had spider mites when I brought it home, got them off of there, but I don't want it in there. I want it in an open spot. And I also have these down here, these espedistras. One of them's just a regular like this and then this one right here is the snow cap. Look at that leaf. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? I'm going to focus on the diamond head first. And the spot where I'd wanted this, I really, I was thinking I was going to have to wait until the palm trees get delivered to get it planted, but I don't, I don't want to wait two more weeks. I just want to get it planted now. Let's see, I had wanted this to go over here. I think that that would be okay. The hibiscus are back there right now, but that's okay. I should be able to move things around them. This chlorophytum doesn't need to stay there. Basically right where that spider plant was, right in that spot. Huh? Good? Yes? Remember, this whole area is going to be completely different in about two weeks. There'll be a big palm tree here. Going to clean this junk out of the way. There'll be annuals and things tossed around on the inside. Looks good. I like the diamond head there. I think that's a good spot for it. Generally want lighter colors in the shade, but uh, it's not really that shady. It's just cloudy. It'll be shady in the afternoons. I think it'll be fine with it. And then the Aspidistra snow cap. Oh, you can't see that. Snow cap. Went in and put that over here on the side of the laurel hedge. I would like for it to fill in this area. I picked up a, a couple more ewes, so I'm going to bring that line down further. Let's you know, we'll talk about that another time. I think that'd be a good spot for it. Fairly well protected because it's just in front of the hedge, and you know these get covered just like the other things do, like I was talking about if it drops below zero. And there's lights still. I forgot to get the lights off of that hedge. I think they're one, two, yeah, three of them. I got them off the other 
the first two, and I forget. It's fine. That's not the point of this. Cast iron plant. I think this is a great spot for it because of the light color. This area over here is very shady, and the tips of these have that beautiful variegation on them. I cannot wait for that leaf to open up. That's going to be beautiful. Oh my gosh, there are cicadas everywhere over here. You see them down there? Look at them over here. These guys, they're popping up like crazy. I don't know how I didn't notice that when I was planting these up. Yeah, I like the way things are coming along because they have the redemption right here with the black, lots of pink and green over here, the diamond head down there. And then remember, there's going to be the Alexander palm. I know I've mentioned that several times, underplanted with those pink wave petunias. And I have, I think, four more, maybe, maybe two or three. I don't know. I need to count other redemptions, which I was going to put around the base of the Alexander Palm. Since I have them, why not? Original plan was to do the Lime Zinger Xanthosomas and with the pink white petunias, but I think the redemptions might go well. Or actually, I'll probably do the Lime Zingers instead because I have the diamond head behind, so it'll be the black with the lime green. That'll look good. Welcome to the chaos of my creativity. There's so much done over here. I think, yeah, there's one, two, three, four more of those redemptions. So I have one of the Ferris Dreams down there which is going to end up going over here. And this whole spot's getting redone. So that's something for a different video. I have to like regrade the soil and everything over there. That's going to be a big project. I have a few perennials I'd like to get in the ground too. I want to get this hookora taken care of. There's a dicenter back here. need to get that out. And then the, oh, oh, those look good together. I like that bright cherry green with the bluish gray of the foot. That's really pretty. And then this Onothera which I don't, I'm out of hands, so we'll have to come back for that. Get those set down right there. I was thinking, huh, actually I'm changing my mind. Hold on. Well, I have the holes dug, and I was originally going to go with the Onothera right there with the Dicentra next to it, and then put the Hookra over here, but I'm really liking how these look next to each other. So I don't know if that's still what I want to do or not. I get oh, I'm going to figure it out. Oh, that looks so good. I love how these go together. I went ahead and did the pink diamonds dicentra over here. I mean, you can see it. It's right in front of you. You, you know what's going on? I don't need to explain it, do I? 12 to 16 inches high and wide, 12 to 16 inches high and wide. This dicentra is supposed to be a repeat bloomer. We will see about that. I hope so, because the entire purpose, like, I mostly only put things up here for the pollinators and just random things that I want to grow but don't fit anywhere else in the garden because of conditions or lighting or water who knows what but this is my dump garden welcome to my dump garden it's not maintained it's not meant to be i just kind of let things go wild over here i'll pull weeds if they get really big and start to have flowers on them but otherwise i just kind of let nature do its thing and pop flowers <laughs> in the cracks when i can oh also put the trifolium for luck green glow in front of everything i want this to eventually fill and take over and just have that beautiful carpet in the front over here and i put the onothera this one sunset boulevard it's down here i think it's a better spot for it. it'll be more dry it's a more rocky area should be happy there we'll see i like the way the colors of those flowers contrast with the white jello behind it i think that looks really good oh and i popped a rosemary right next to it that's just i don't know we'll see how it does i really like how those colors look together that looks very very pretty also just notice look apples finally got some apples finally i just planted them last year it's exciting though didn't have apples on them last year see a whole bunch on there. This one is a Honeycrisp, and that is a Liberty down there. It looks like they both have some fruit on them. Okay, now that I have done a ton of planting, I'm going to try and regroup, rearrange a little bit, and finish some things up. Better. Yes. Messy, but it's raining. I'm not going to bother blowing this off right now. That wouldn't make any sense. Things are regrouped. going to be easier to water. We have a productive few days. Got a lot of stuff planted and getting down to just the nitty gritty. I have four, five perennials left that I would like to get in the ground. Six, six, you. It's getting ready to bloom, so I don't want to plant it. I want to leave it alone. I want to let it bloom so I can enjoy the flowers over here by the steps. When it's done blooming, I'll go ahead and get the magnolia in the ground. And then the rest are mostly annuals that are, I think just about everything that's left is intended to go around the palm trees that are coming in a couple of weeks. It's not a ton left over here to play with or get filled into the pots and things that's pretty much done oh except for the i need to do those i forgot i just set those down yesterday and then went inside and completely forgot about them i have a few more things spaced out over here that i want to get planted up but it'll have to wait because it's starting to rain harder and harder and harder and it's not i don't know i don't know is that gonna be exciting who knows maybe it will be there's still plenty of stuff left to plant 
up here. I forgot. The other Aspidistra, it's right there. This whole area is going to get cleaned out, and I want it to be a shade garden. I'm going to put some kind of backdrop along the fence. Might do the fake vine ivy stuff. We're not really supposed to do that with HOA, but I might do it anyway. And then plop in lots of shade plants up here. And I, the, what was that? The, <laughs> the cast iron plants. This turned out to be two different plants. When I pulled it out of the container to plant it, it split in two. So there's one right here. Another one over there. Nice dry shade. I think they should be happy there. It's all going to be more about winter survivability. Drops below 10, they usually die to the ground, but they should come back up. The ground over here is pretty fluffy, so I think it'll be an okay spot for them. I would love to just have lots of shiny green leaves in here. There's another variety that I wanted to try up here, and I, can't, I think it's called like Bubba, <laughs> something like that. It's one that gets huge, has really wide leaves, and I think it's like three feet tall, maybe 40 inches, something like that. It gets pretty big. That's what I like. my dream would be to fill this in with just a whole bunch of those, but I haven't seen them for sale. So for now, just stick with the regular sale they do. If they don't do well, then I'll be glad that I didn't put the Bubba's up there, maybe. All in all, I'd say this was a pretty productive week. A few days, like four days of work out here in little increments. Got a lot done. Totaled around 80 plants in the ground or containers. Yeah, I'm liking this. Things are going to be coming along really well here over the next few weeks. Really cannot wait to watch these sun impatience start to fill out and hopefully watch this work out. It's a very, you know, the sweet potato vibes will be fine. So crazy tunias. No, we'll see. Oh, it looks so good. It's going to be so full and colorful. I forgot to mention that I did plant these rather close together, probably maybe I'd say six inches closer together than you really should, but I'm going to go ahead and say it's fine because I've always done it and it's been okay that way. <laughs> They're going to mound up with each other and blend in better, and it's more of an instant impact planting them close together. Is it best practice? No. Is it what a lot of us do? Yeah. The sun and patience, as long as you live someplace that's warm and has warm evenings, don't have to worry about them mildewing out all that much if they're too crowded. And not, that's, I don't know. It's not something you should have to worry about until late summer into fall when the nighttime temperatures start to drop. And by then, they're fizzled out for the most part, or I will have given them a cutback in late July, mid-July. Occasionally, I remember to do it, but rarely. These should be cut in half around midsummer, so that they'll fill back out and get nice and bushy again. That helps prevent them from overgrowing with each other. These are, I'm pretty sure these are all the compact varieties. I don't know. I'm not worried about it. I think it'll be fine. Always have been. Never been an issue with that. It's not as long as they're getting all their sun. Oh, I forgot I was going to put those Tritoscantias down in the front. Well, it's, it's fine. I did enough. That's enough. I had a good time finally getting some stuff in the ground. Thanks for hanging out. Comment down below. Say hi. What are you guys up to in your garden? Do you have your tropicals out yet? I'm pretty late on it, but it just it seemed necessary to wait as long as I needed to because of all the stuff on the patio and other things. And I'd say they're okay with it. They're looking pretty good. Yeah, but I'm spent. It's starting to rain a little bit harder. Going to go ahead and say goodbye. Like I said, hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, a great night, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye. <sighs> Change my mind. Video's not over. For those of you who like long videos, you're welcome. I just, I can't stop. There's still so many things left to do. And normally, I finish a video and I have a feeling of accomplishment and that I've gotten a lot done. I don't have that. I don't think I'm going to have that until I finish up with... A bunch of these perennials so the proud berry coral berry awesome shrub it's a native zones three to seven part to full sun really just an excellent plant to have around i like these because the berries and the fall color plants that have berries on them are good to have around for the wildlife and i originally got this to keep back here so i'm gonna put it back here somewhere now soft serve cypress i think this one goes like 10 by 10, something like that. It's a fat, chunky little arb, basically. It goes 6 to 10 feet tall, 5 to 6 feet wide. Okay, it's fairly far off there. Zones 4 to 8, needs sun. This is the perfect size to put over here by my fence where there's this big bare spot. I'm going to put that right in front of the fence. Well, a few feet out from the fence. You know what I mean? Not right up against it. I don't think the neighbors would appreciate that. I'm going to go ahead and get those two things planted, which will probably take a minute because the soil over there is not fun to dig in. And the soil where that proud berry is going is fine for little plants, big plants. It's going to take a minute. And then I'd like to get these game changer hydrangeas planted. I have a big, beautiful blue planter that's over. You see it right there? There it is. It's supposed to be right here. It's over there still because this area got filled in. 
So I get those planted, then I can move that planter back over here, and I can worry about those other things later. And then that only leaves what? Three acanthus, two of which I know where they're going to go. One of them I want to go over here, but I need to do a whole, I already talked about, there's gonna be a whole thing going on over here, so I can plant, blah, <laughs> what just happened? I can plant up two of those three, and that's gonna get a lot more stuff off the patio and I can shift all of this stuff over there, and then I'll have this space opened up so I can go ahead and do what I need to do over here, which will be in a different video, and uh, then I will be able to focus on the projects that's going to be going on up here. I'm going to be gutting out this area, getting it all put back together, and uh, I think this will be happening next week. If I get all these other things planted I was talking about, then that is going to free up the time that I need to get this area cleaned up, I need to level out a spot, I'm gonna put an aviary in here. <laughs> she didn't think I was gonna say that, did you? I'm gonna grab my shovel, get to work, and get done whatever I can get done in between showers. If it starts to rain again, then I'm gonna call it because <laughs> I do still need to edit this video. I just I went inside and a couple hours passed and I realized, you know, I'm gonna be editing this video for the bulk of the day tomorrow, Friday, the day before this video comes out. And that's a whole day of work. I'm not gonna be able to get stuff done out here. And next week I need to get that other space cleared out because, like I said, planning on putting an aviary in over there. We'll talk about all that <laughs> when I'm doing it and in the process of it. It's probably gonna take a long time. It maybe won't be the longest video, but getting the things done for the video are going to take a long time. And it's nice and cool. There's lots of rain in the forecast. This is a good time to get up here and dig in these problematic areas where it's harder to dig. So it just, it just made sense. These fucking flies. Whew. Did that fast. Not really sure why I rushed through it so much. Pardon the weeds. I don't come over here into this side of the yard all that often. Yeah, I think that that's going to look good here. Think about that. You know, six, eight feet wide, something like that by about ten feet tall. That's perfect to fill in this spot. It's not going to be too high so it won't shade anything in the neighbor's yard. But it'll provide a little bit more privacy along the fence line. It's a nice, fun green texture too. Redbud's looking good. It's the sweetheart Caroline variegated red bud. It's not that variegated right now, but it was very pretty when it flushed out. It's still pretty right now. It's got a lot of growth going over this way. Did a lot of growing this spring. Most of that's new. It was like all the way back to about here just a couple months ago. All right, and down here, I'm gonna fill in the front of this berm with game changer hydrangeas. Fill in. I'm gonna plant four. I'm gonna pull up the pedicets, at least most of them, as many as I need to right now to get one, two, three, four of those in the ground, and then I think I'm gonna do an acanthus over here. So there'll be an acanthus right there, an acanthus over here that you can't see right now, and I'd like to plant another one up here on that hill somewhere. <sighs> okay, deep breath, feeling good. I only had four of the game changers, and I think that that worked out well. Game changer, I'm referring to the hydrangeas here. The only spot where I think they'll get enough sun is basically where I put them, so I'm not really bothered by the fact that I couldn't take them all the way up and down. They're repeat bloomer, 24 by 24. I think they'll push more like 30 by 30 from the other ones that I've seen. They have these really big mop head, not mop head, lace cap, flowers on giant petals. All of them are kind of in between flower sets right now, so none of them look all that great, but you can imagine when that fills out and fills in the cascade of flowers up there with all the impatience and things we plant in front of them. I think it's going to look beautiful. Never mind the mess, that's all going to be taken care of when I get the impatience filled into this area right here. I put a number three, that's how Monrovia does their pots, a number three acanthus mollus right here. Oak leaf is the variety on that one. They have these really long leaves on them. To me, they're very reminiscent of a philodendron or some kind of big exotic aeroid. I just like the glossiness to them. So I believe the pot size on this is actually a five or seven gallon. It took me a while to get that hole dug in that spot. I have one of those right here. Another one I planted several weeks ago that was a one gallon right here, and then I just put a number two, <laughs> which I'll show you the pot. This is kind of an awkward size pot. This is the number two. So there's the number three, big deep pot, number two right here. And the number one is, it's, it's just a one gallon container. That's all number one is. So I have them spread out fairly well in the garden. I'm gonna be able to see what spots they prefer this year just by well, having them spread around. And that leaves me with one more acanthus to plant, but the last one is going to go in that area that I have to get gutted and cleaned out. So I'll just have to hold on to that one. I'm feeling this is good. Now, okay, back to what I was saying before. We'll see everybody in a few days, next week. Bye-bye.